All right, so this time I'm going to give you guys a proof. I want you to look at it. I want you to tell me um, if there's anything wrong with this, if you believe this, okay? So 5x equals 4, and here's how I'm going to prove it to you. 5x. Nope. 5 equals 4. x plus y equals x. 5x equals 4x. You see what, you already know the answer? What? Okay, so if you can't see, what I did was, this is what I'm telling you to suppose is true. Okay, x plus y equals z. Now, when you do a proof and you suppose something's true, this is a reasonable thing to assume. I'm not violating any, you know, laws of physics or anything to suppose that. So you generally would accept that claim that x plus y equals z. Okay, but the rest of the proof that I'm going to show you here, I'd like you to figure out, see if you can tell if anything goes wrong. Because if nothing goes wrong, then 5 equals 4, which is a problem, right? So let's see, uh, this here, 5x minus 4, that's x. 5y minus 4y, that's y. And... That's z. So all I did was I rewrote x plus y equals z. Okay? So now I'm going to gather up my uh, fives on one side. And my fours on the other. So that I can factor them out. Okay, and then I'll divide both sides. What? What? Yes, France. That's okay. If you don't know what X and Y are, that's okay. There's, there's a bigger problem here that's a little subtle one. Yeah, 5 equals 4 is not so subtle. That's a problem. <laughs> well, because in the calculator it would be wrong, because 5 equals 4, and the calculator won't tell you that. Well, the first time I saw something like this, I didn't get it either. Is there anybody that else wants to try and hazard a guess? Yeah, go again, friends. See, the thing is, if I told you that this is true, suppose x plus y equals z, then that means I get to use that. It might work for your argument. It might work against your argument. But what I've got here then is x plus y minus z is 0. Does anybody see a problem now? <laughs> what? What's the problem now? It's 0. What did I do with x plus y minus z? You moved the z to the left side. I mean that, yeah. Well, I did move the z to the left side, but I'm talking about this proof here. Um, well, multiplying by zero is a legal move to make. But dividing by 0 isn't, and that's the problem here. Because it's divided by x plus y minus z, and that is equal to 0. So when I did this step in my proof, that's now invalid because you cannot do that in mathematics. It's not defined to divide something by 0. Okay? So that's where we would say that, no, this, this claim is not valid because you can't divide by 0 just to get your answer that works. If we were allowed to divide by zero, weird things like this could happen, and then math really wouldn't have any kind of leg to stand on. So that's one of the reasons that you can't divide by zero, is weird things happen. All right, let's, let's try this one, and we'll wrap this one here. So choose any number, add five, double the result, subtract four, and then subtract the original number. So let's just try it and see what happens. So choose any number. Somebody give me a number. Twelve. Seven, I heard. Okay, seven. Plus five. Add five, I get 12. 
Double the result, I get 24. Subtract 4, I get 20. Uh, divide by 2, I get 10. And subtract the original number. Whoa. Whoa. The result is 3. 13, okay. 13, you're going to add 5, so we get 18. Double the result. <laughs> Subtract 4, and I'm going to get uh, 32. There you go. Divide by 2, and I'm going to get 16. Subtract 13. Oh, snap. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyways, let's uh, try an even number. You're all fascinated, right? Okay, I'm going to give you one minute. I'm going to pause the video. You can try any number you like, and then you can try it with a neighbor, okay? Ready, go. So. Okay, here's the thing, guys. When you're doing that, that's your inductive reasoning telling you there's some kind of pattern here. And now you're trying to learn how to do it deductively. So let's take a look at what... Uh, does anyone want to take a stab at that name? Daisuke? Dice K? Yeah, actually, I, I've met somebody named Dice K, so I, I didn't know that's how you spelt it. Yes? Dice Say it again. I, hold on, guys. I can't hear Paul. Well, hang on, Paul. Okay, go ahead. All right. Okay. So this is what we're walking through is um, Dice K is trying to come up with a proof. So he says, choose any number. That's N. Add 5. Double it. So he's doubled the number. Subtract 4. Divide by 2. But then he says... When you subtract the original number, he got 6, not 3. So the problem that he had was, Paul's pointed it out, he didn't divide both by 2, he divided that one by 2, but he forgot to divide that by 2. It should have been a 3. Because had he have divide, or done that, he would have an n plus 3 here, and when you subtract the original, you're left with 3. So now, those of you who are thinking... Oh, this only worked for that number that Mr. Joyce picked. If you follow those steps, you should probably be more convinced that this will work for whatever numbers you're picking. Uh, other than a decimal, yeah. Okay. It doesn't work on negatives? Okay, well, why don't we try a negative then and see? Negative 2. Negative 12? Negative 2? How does it work on a decimal? All right, all right, let's just try it and see what happens. Add 5, I get 3. 6, 2, 1, subtract negative 2, oh, when I subtract negative 2, I end up at 3. <laughs> so yeah, it does work for negatives, but <laughs> I, lo I love the enthusiasm, but here's the thing, guys, you, you've got to understand that you don't need to keep checking individuals anymore, it tells you right there. Decimals, however, I would, I would probably be inclined to believe those of you who say decimals won't work, okay? I think decimals won't work in this case. Okay, let's try it and see if it works for a decimal then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's way too loud. I'm yelling over you. 1.25. 1.25 it is, okay. Let's add 5. 6.25. Double the result. 12.5, subtract 4 is 8.5, divide by 2 is 4.25, subtract the original number is 1.25, Three. it still works. 69. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. There was a, James says he has another trick for us. James, you want to explain your trick? Okay. Okay, so we're going to go age, and then we multiply it by 7. This makes me angry. Then multiply... I have this math trick that's What's for that 1,400? By what? 1,000? Yeah, it's so weird. I hated it. And then you should get age three times? All right, so I'm going to guess that most people here are probably 7, 16? What about Mr. 16 or 17? I am 31. Oh, six years old. Yeah. Uh, 31's not a bad, I don't know if 31 is worth cheering about, but 31's not a bad uh, age anyway. So 16 times 7, I get 112. 
times one four four three, I get one six one six one six. So there, don't doubt James and his mathematical skills. So maybe you can prove that one to us. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop us. Oh, you got another one? Yeah. Okay, choose a number. And? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then you get your original back. <laughs> All right, I, I guess I walked into that one. All right, so anyways, um, I just want to show you guys you need to copy this one down. I am, I am going to collect the homework that was due um, today. We're running out of time, and I don't want to have a, a total mess. So I'm going to collect it in tutorial block this week. Okay. So the homework that was due right now. The homework that was due right now is due tutorial. But this homework here will be due um, Friday. Okay. I'll collect it from you. Flex block. 1 to 11, and then you can choose any two of those problems from 13 to 16. Now here's the thing, I know what's going to happen. Some of these proofs are going to challenge you, and you're going to look in the back of the book and see what the answer says. Now, um, that's why I'm asking you to choose two. Read them and see which proofs make sense to you. If you can do it right from scratch, perfect. But if you can't, I'd at least like you to pick a proof that you understand when you choose those two. Now hang on, there's also from invalid, I've got two questions for you in invalid proofs. So it's number five and six from 43. The other page was 31. 31, one to 11, and choose two of 13 to 16. The other one is 43, numbers five and six. Choose any two of 13 to 16. Yeah, Paul. 